Welcome fellow folders and this video is all about the art of making paper, tips and tricks on how to do it and go about it. I'm not going to show you anything that I do, of course top secret, um, but basically the general purpose and ways of making paper and if you want, if you've ever thought about making it yourself then this is a good video to watch to take some tips and tricks. Anyway, paper making is such a big thing in um, folding. Um, before I start, um, when I say paper making, people will say that a lot. I made the paper. Technically, they did not make the paper unless you made it from scratch, from paper pulps, and made the sheets that way. But it's probably a better way to say, um, how would you say it? I treated the paper, I custom made the paper, that would probably more suit the, the term, the correct terminology, but just going to go through a few examples and yeah, so what we have here is uh, three things, the paper collection which I am starting, uh, this little notepad which is extremely useful and a sheet underneath which I will show later on because the angle of the camera is it doesn't fully show it, uh, the colours that good. But paper making starts off with MC, which is methyl cellulose, and it's is it like wallpaper paste? And um, it's similar to wallpaper paste. What you do is you take a surface and then you put paper on it, and then you put the MC on it, and then you let it dry, and then or, or you put it. Uh, on the, on, on the surface first, paper, uh, MC, so let me just, this is the surface, I'm going to take a piece of paper, no, I'm going to put some MC on it, I'm going to put the paper on it, and then MC, and then I'm going to let it completely dry, and then I will peel it off, and then you have treated a piece of paper, that is the general purpose, and you tend to treat paper, uh, from experience and doing it over time uh, You treat paper that can absorb liquid. That's what I found works the most and Sometimes paper doesn't work like you wouldn't really treat craft paper that doesn't absorb liquid um, I'm, I've never tried it, but I'm going to assume that it does not work you I've treated uh, Vogue paper and Vogue Peril from the origami shop, I did that years ago, it did not work, it completely stuck to the glass, even though that to me seemed um, like it dissolved liquid, it didn't work. Um, so it's a lot of trial and error as well to get to the point where you want to be and creating your own sheets. Now, a thing that helped me the most, because I'm making so many sheets, I have so many ideas. Before I got this, no this uh, notepad, I was writing down recipes on little scraps of paper. Maybe I'll just say, that's a little scrap of paper. I was writing it down and then putting it somewhere and then a week later, I'd be going, where did I put this scrap of paper? Because I really need to know what I wrote down on it. And then I couldn't find it, I'd lose it. That happened quite a lot. Now, I have this. I found all the scraps. I got a notepad and I wrote down everything, so all the sheets I've made over like the past, whenever I got this, about two months ago, I have wrote um, near enough all of them down, all the, the ingredients I use, the recipes, the quantities, the paper, the time it took, it's all written down in a journal in here. So whenever, if, if ever I need to go back and recreate a sheet, it should be in here, unless it's a sheet I made like over two months ago so it's really handy to have this because it's all in one you don't need to write down scraps of, uh, write it down on bits of paper you may end up losing them and you can't find it and then you get frustrated whereas it's, it's all in one I know where this is going to be at all given times and it's so handy like, let me show you but the cool thing is when I show this, I've, I installed the automatic blurrer pixelizer 6000 on the camera, so whew, see that? It's all blurred. 
can't even read any of it. Like that. Unblurred. Blurred. Unblurred. Blurred. See, it works. But, all jokes aside, it's extremely handy to get one of these if you don't. If you are, are an avid paper maker like myself, then this will come in so handy. I guarantee you it will change your life if you get one of these and and do this. Because I have tons of methods, tons of recipes, so it's good to have them stored here and in memory as well. Now you should all know what this is, the paper collection. I've not actually did much more ever since I last showed it. What I'm planning to do in here is, if you don't already know, all of the pieces of paper I've made, like over the past few years, I cut mini squares out like Pokemon cards and store them like Pokemon cards. It's a card holder. Uh, I'm not, again, I don't know what the terminology is, but that's what it's like. It's a card holder. And that idea is, if I can follow this up with lots of different types of paper I've made, colours, thicknesses, uh, textures, quantities, etc. Then it will help inspire me to create more sheets. Because then, if I'm thinking of, if I want to make a sheet for a, something that doesn't exist in real life, like a dragon, a, a dragon could be any of these colours. I can make one this colour, I can make one that colour, this colour, that colour. It, it just depends. It helps me to get inspired to decide um, what type of colour should I do, or what type of paper, or thickness, or dual colour, um, all comes down to that. And this is the one I made recently. This is for the King Gehadora by um, Wang Web one on Twitter, really good friend of mine. This is, what I did as a test fold, now, if you're making paper, it's extremely beneficial to make a small test fold. If you make the paper, uh, treat and make paper with the same type of paper, if you've got many methods, then I would advise to get, depending on the sheet, just say it's 100 centimetres, get a full sheet, cut it up in uh, small bits, like 10 centimetre squares, maybe 10, uh, 20 centimetres, and Whenever you have an idea for colour, texture, etc, do it on a little test fold. That way you don't waste a full sheet. If I did a test fold on this sheet and it never worked, I've just wasted this full sheet. And I don't like to waste paper because in general it's an expensive hobby to constantly buy paper and everything you need to make. Uh, and treat the paper, so it's handy to uh, save some scraps for test folds and uh, test testing. And this is it. Hopefully, you can see that fine. But what I did was I did a few tests. Each one was slightly different. The one I liked the most, I went with that one, and then I made four of these on like this scale, the sheet underneath. And I'll attach them together and then there we go we have the full sheet and it's only cost me about six of these square sizes that's all it cost me and I have literally no waste in return and I can also use these for in here as well so I don't waste anything Another cool one is this one here, which I'm just starting to test on. Look how thin this is. 4 GSM. That is so thin. And with me, I tend to buy a lot of paper. If I like paper, which I do, if I see like a good deal or something, someone selling it, I'll tend to buy it because it's just, it's an addiction. Um, I've spent quite a bit of money on everything I use. It's more than a hobby, it's more like a lifestyle because I'm just constantly having ideas, 
on how to make paper, the colours, everything. So I tend to have a good variety of all the things I use to help get to the sheets that you see in the final models. And what else, uh, what can help as well is maybe make the sheet beforehand. Sometimes I tend to make sheets like once or twice before I make the final one, just in case I need to make any adjustments or anything that might go wrong when I thought it would go right, I might need to do that, which really, really helps. So that is a brief explana explanation on uh, the notepad and in fact I'll keep it on the screen as well. Why not? The notepad and the collection. Now treating paper, you would do it on a surface that doesn't absorb liquid. So I could do it on this cutting mat. I can treat paper on this and it doesn't absorb liquid. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, I've never tried it. I think it would work. I could treat it on the table underneath, which you have all seen, I can't remember. Yeah, you've all seen it's a hard, soft, smooth wood. Um, I could treat it on that. Uh, I use glass. You could, you could use uh, some sort of plastic, like PVA. Um, again, smooth wood. Even people have used windows, their windows. The plant psychologist, who you should all know, he uses a window, or have seen him, I've seen him use windows from pictures. Um, so again, anything that doesn't absorb liquid will work. Boyce treats his on the cutting mat and then cuts it straight off the mat and then peels it off a perfect square. That's a really neat trick as well that you could do. Now, when treating paper, what you would normally do is you'd have your surface and then, I've already said this, you'd put on MC and then you'd put on the paper. There's a few ways to do the paper. Normally, uh, when I first started, uh, when I seen it from uh, Sarah Adams' video, she just put the paper on and then brushed MC on, which is what I did. Because I never knew, um, it's a good way to start out, but what I then later showed is using a tube, you roll the paper over a tube, and then you roll it onto the surface, and then you get it nice and smooth, zero wrinkles, and uh, when you peel it off, it's completely smooth, near enough. Oh, a, a good thing as well is, when you treat paper, cut a little test off, and I'll just use that for example, cut a little test off, put it on, MC it, and then like try and pull it apart, because you want to try and test how strong the paper is. I, I want to know if I put a piece of paper on the glass, and then if I just do a gentle brush stroke, is it going to rip because it's that thin? Um, do I need to be extremely gentle when I brush? Or am I allowed to put a bit of effort and uh, force to get it nice and smooth? That way I don't, you, again, use a full square and then I go one brush stroke, uh, brush stroke in the middle and then it rips. Because that's a nightmare, uh, there's no way to really fix it, even putting an another piece of paper over it will just, I won't really make it look smooth, you see the difference in thicknesses depending on the paper. Now I can show the paper from the better angle and um, so you can see the colours more clear. So one thing that helps when you have the understanding basics of how to make paper is getting inspired to make paper and what type of paper, what colour etc. Again this will help me in the future, this as well, but you want to, for me, when I'll, I'll let you comment below what you think this sheet is for before I tell you. You can, have a, you can hazard a guess to what you think this is for, but to me, before I make a sheet of paper, I will First of all, for example, I will Google what colour is a lobster and then I'll look at pictures of lobsters 
and then I'll see what colours look really nice, what colours can they be in, and then from there I will decide, okay I'll go with this colour, and then I'll decide what type of paper, what type of paper would best suit a lobster. And then I'll go through the thicknesses I have, can I make them large, and how big can I make it with how many overlaps, so many questions come into play. And then when I've decided, I will do a few tests to see if it works out. And then if the tests work, I will make the full sheet. So, have you got the model correct for this sheet of paper? This is for Shuki Kato's Asian Elephant. Now, I got inspired to make this sheet for that model because I googled what colour is an Asian elephant and it came up quite a few and this was the like the medium of colours and a few other things is elephants tend to be the colour of the land that they live on which is quite a, a unique fact and they don't have the same skin tone all the way around the colour um, has some separation as well so it's not all the same colour, it's not all grey, it's not all brown some parts are darker, some parts are lighter and what I also took into consideration was imagine they are rolling about in mud some parts of the mud are dry, some parts of the mud are wet wet tends to be darker and dry tends to be lighter so we have darker bits here splotches, dark parts, really light parts, um, the textures, we've got all that in place. Again I'll take pictures to show it as well at the end. And also they have tusks which are colour changed, then I had to take into consideration how can I get the colour change? What colour are the tusks? Tusks are bone, bone isn't white. Um, I made his African elephant, I did the tusks completely white and then I realised, oh they're not actually completely white, they are like a, like a bonish colour, so darker. Anyway, once I figured that out, I made that and we have a darker colour, which to me will be perfect for the tusks. And I had to think about um, what paper should I use because making dual colour tends to be t t tends to add a lot of thickness because you have two layers of paper so what was the best way to go about um, getting that getting that effect and this is what I came up with now this sheet is really similar to the African elephant paper but this is thinner. I used a thinner white on this side to hopefully get oh, there we go. Uh, a better thickness and easier to fold. I wanted, it, I wanted it to be nice and thick to hold the volume of shaping because the African elephant I completely filled with cotton wool so there's so much, it's probably the heaviest model I have. There's so much cotton wool on it. To help with the thickness of the model, capture that, capture the thickness and roundness. And I think I have covered everything. Oh, well, there's there's lots to talk about. There's probably lots I've not covered. Um, of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. So hopefully, I helped inspire you to make your own paper. It is a timely process. You need a lot of dedication to go about doing it and. It can be costly, but that's what it's all about. If you love it, then price doesn't matter. So yeah, that is everyone. Thank you all for watching and fellow folders, I am out.